word on this covenant day of open doors in this third service. And I want to appreciate God's able servant in the house, the state pastor, my mentor, and my life coach for this privilege. I believe the grace of God as at work in him and manifested in the first two services will also help me in this third service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, I want to urge you to get the CDs of the first two services as God's servant ministered exhaustively and impactfully. In this service, I will just add a bit to what he has said. Praise the Lord. Our teaching topic for our Sunday services this month has been captioned, Understanding the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. And this is part four in the series. I'm taking part four C. Praise the Lord. Understanding the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. And in the first two services, God's servant emphasized on five major blessings that we have access to via prayer and fasting. Number one, God takes over our battles. Number two, he enhances our access to divine guidance. Number three, engenders divine health. Number four, secures posterity. And number five, empowers fulfillment of prophecy. And because today is our covenant day of open doors, I'm going to dwell on the subject of open doors because that is a major blessing that fasting and prayer offers us. As we can see from Isaiah 58, verses 11, 12, and 14. Isaiah 58, verses 11, 12, and 14. He said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of parts to dwell in. Verse 14. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. I thought somebody is receiving that with a big amen. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for thy mouth, the mouth of the Lord, has spoken it. All of this that we have read can be summarized in open doors. When you, you know, encounter open doors, these are the kind of things that happen in your life. Say, open doors, all round open doors is a major, you know, blessing that follows prayer and fasting. And also we saw this practically demonstrated in the release of Peter from the prison in Acts chapter 12. From verse 5 to 10. Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 10. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing. What was made? Prayer, prayer, prayer. I believe they added fasting too. Was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second world, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. In the mighty name of Jesus, every door that has hitherto been closed against you, they will open on their own accord. You have waited on God 21 days praying and fasting. No door shall ever remain closed against you again in the name of Jesus. Let's go back to that verse again. Verse 10. It says, 
the door opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street and fought with the and fought with the angel departed from him. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, the name above every name, because you have waited on God in prayer and fasting, no door shall ever be shut against you again. Every closed door will begin to open on their own accord in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 45. I want to emphasize now on how to engage the right keys for open doors. Isaiah 45, from verse 1 to 3. Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Uh, your amen can be better. Let your amen be a turnaround amen. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. And will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Hallelujah. The anointed cannot be stranded in the journey of life. What God said to Cyrus, his anointed, is what he's saying to all his anointed children. Are you one of God's anointed children? Are you one of God's anointed children? Talk to me. Are you one of God's anointed children? Mark chapter 13 and verse 37. Jesus said, And what I say unto to you, I say unto all, watch. And so, open doors is the heritage of every anointed child of God. However, we must engage the right key in order to open any closed door. True or false? You must engage the right key. Without the right keys, you will only be struggling in vain trying to access any closed door. To unlock the doors to your covenant rights and privileges, you must locate the right keys and know how to use them. No matter how long you use the wrong key on a door, the door will not open in spite of your desperation. Please note that Jesus has the right key to all doors to your inheritances. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it, and shut it and no man openeth. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Let me hear your big amen. amen. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Hallelujah. He has the keys of David. Isaiah 22 and verse 22. Isaiah 22 and verse 22. It says, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open. Hallelujah. The key of David is a master key that is capable of opening any door and keeping it open. It opens doors of blessings and shuts doors of curses for God's children. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9, A great door and effectual is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. For every advancement you want to make in life, the devil will raise adversaries to hinder your advancement. But in the name of Jesus, the name above every name, by this encounter today, every adversary 
of our advancement shall be visited with adversity. Every adversary of our advancement in life and destiny and ministry shall be visited with adversity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keys signify power and authority. Jesus handed over the keys of the kingdom to the church before his bodily departure from the earth. Matthew 16, verses 18 and 19. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He doesn't need the keys again. He has handed over the keys to the church. It's left for you. If you don't use the key, you will be stranded in the journey of life. And you can't blame him for it. Praise God. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Luke 11 verse 52. He said, Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. The lawyers always argue with the truth of God's word, especially in those days. And I think in these days too. Don't they argue these days? But thank God for lawyers that have covenant sense. Who have respect for the word of God. And so we see from that scripture that the key Jesus is talking about is the key of knowledge. He refers to this key as the key of knowledge. Praise God. It takes relevant knowledge to access all our inheritances in Christ. In John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32, Jesus was speaking to the Jews that believed in him. He said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. There are disciples, and there are disciples indeed. Those who continue in the world, they are the disciples indeed. Verse 32, he said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall do what? Shall make you free. Acts 20, verse 32. Acts 20, verse 22. Paul said to the Ephesian elders, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Able to do what? To build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You must have relevant knowledge of the word of God, allow the word of God to build you up, and then you can access any of your inheritances in Christ without struggle. Without struggle. Hallelujah. Daniel 11 verse 32. Say, as many as do wickedly against the covenant, will he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Who are the people that will be strong and do exploits? Who are the people that will be strong and do exploits? Please talk to me. Who are the people that will be strong and do exploits? If you want to be a man and a woman of exploits, that cannot be exploited by the devil. You must go for relevant knowledge of God's word. You must pay whatever price it is to be full of the knowledge of God's word. That is your access to your covenant inheritance. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power has given us all things. How many things? All things. Given us all things not some things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge. Through what? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has called us to glory and virtue, not shame and reproach. But your access to that glory and virtue is knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Now, if you look at that Revelation chapter 3, verses 8 and 10, you see a clear reference to knowledge there. He said, If I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Now, the next line says, For thou, no, verse 8, For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word. Has done what? Has kept my word. Knowledge. 
Now you will notice but after short it, there's a semicolon there. So in my little understanding of English, the two statements are connected. Praise the Lord. One is a consequence of the other. So the reason they are enjoying open doors that cannot be shut is because even in their little strength, they have knowledge. They keep the word of God and has kept my word and has not denied my name. Now look at verse 10 again. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word. You have done what? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Hallelujah. Lack of knowledge is the mother of all lacks. Lack of knowledge is the mother of all lacks. It gives birth to all manner of lacks. Lack of knowledge. Don't play with it. Don't tolerate it. Proverbs 19, verse 2a. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 2a. He said, also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. Did you see that? It is not good. And he that hasted with his feet, seen it. For the soul to be without knowledge is not good for you. That's why this year, if you have the opportunity to attend the Word of Faith Bible Institute, when it is announced, please don't excuse yourself. That is where you contact the spirit of this commission in full. And when you contact the spirit of this commission, you can never be stranded in life. Just like this ministry has never been stranded. Everywhere this ministry goes, doors open on their own accord. Praise the Lord. If you can sit through the worldly programs, this year, you can determine, I will do BCC, do LCC, do LDC. Let me see the devil that will stand on your way at the end of the day. Go for knowledge. Help me tell your neighbor, go for knowledge. If you want to go forward, go for knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. He said, therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Because they don't want, they have no knowledge. That's the reason they went into captivity. They are not sinners, though. they are God's people. They are God's people. But they have chosen ignorance. What is ignorance? Ignoring what you are supposed to know. They chose ignorance. And so they go into captivity. Say, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Same thing in Hosea, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you reject knowledge, he said, he also will reject you. He said, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Did you see that? Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget thy children. Say, God forbid. Say, God forbid. See how dangerous it is to reject knowledge? Say, me too. I will reject your children. That will not be our portion. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So quickly, I want to show us from scriptures some examples of right engagement of keys to assess your inheritance. For instance, the right covenant key for opening the door of sound health, fruitfulness, and long life is addicted kingdom service with joy. It's no other key. Addicted kingdom service with joy. Exodus 23, verses 25 and 26. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and water. He said, He will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Nothing shall cast your own or be barren in thy land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Just those two scriptures. Four blessings are mentioned there that establishes your life and destiny. Sound health, provision. Sound health, fruitfulness, long life. Money can buy those. Praise God. It takes a dictated kingdom service. Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 and 48. He said, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, you will end up serving your enemies. That is, doors will be shut against you by the enemy. You'll be stranded. Verse 48. 
Don't allow yourself to get depressed to the point that you, you are not, you know, serving God with joy. When you don't serve God with joy, you serve your enemies. Verse 47 is a description of a state of depression. And verse 48 is a description of a state of oppression. Until you are depressed, you can't be oppressed. So you don't want to be depressed by the devil, I mean, oppressed by the devil, don't ever allow depression that will keep you from serving God. This year, none of us shall serve our enemies. Let me hear your turn around, amen. This year, none of us shall serve our enemies in the name of Jesus. Number two, the right covenant key for opening the doors of financial prosperity is obedience to the laws of prosperity, that is, sowing and reaping. No matter how you fast and pray, if you don't give, you will still suffer financial hardship. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, as long as the earth remains, sowing and reaping shall never cease. Seed time and harvest shall never cease. Malachi chapter 3, from verse 8 to 10. Some people may have turned that one away from their Bible, but it's still in the Bible of the, of the pastors. Praise the Lord. He said, ye are caused with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will, I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You want to enjoy open heavens? Be a committed tighter, beginning from this month of January. Don't break it. Try God for the next three months. Praise the Lord. If your financial fortune does not turn around, throw away your Bible. Praise the Lord. You can't suffer financial tightness if you are a tighter. The truth is, if you don't pay your tithes to God, you will pay it to the devourers. Verse 11 said he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. One sickness is enough to clear off a man's whole life savings. Oftentimes, what you pay to the devourer is much more than the tithes that you say you must eat. God said it's his own. You say it's not his own. Not paying tithe is called robbery. What is robbery? Robbery is obtaining by force. It's higher than stealing. God said it's his own. You say, no, it's not your own. I will collect it. So as it were, you put a, 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 a pistol on, God's head, on, on the head of God. And you say, your money or your life. Your money or your life. To your God, to your maker. He said it's my own. You say it's not his own. And you eat everything. <laughs> Praise God. Some robbers stopped some luxurious bus on the way. They said, all of you who, are, who pay tight in your church, stay on, stay on the right side. Those who don't pay tight, stay on the left. And then they told all those who pay their tithes to go back to your seats. Those who don't pay their tithes, they robbed them of all their money. And they said, we have not done anything bad. You are worse than us. You, you are robbing God. But we will only rob men. So we are holier than you. Praise God. And they are right. <laughs> because they are fulfilling scripture by robbing them. That is a devourer now. And since they don't pay tight, they should be robbed. May the Lord give you understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 6, 38 says, Give. It will be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Number three. The right covenant keys for opening the doors of success and progress is continuous study, meditation, and practice of the word of God. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. This year you will enjoy good success. You will enjoy good success. James 1:25. Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. He said, This man shall be blessed in his deed. You will be that man. 
I said, you will be that woman. You shall be blessed in your deed. You want success and continuous progress? Continue to study the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Practice the word of God. And then, the right covenant keys for opening the doors of promotion and lifting is dedication and humility. Like we saw in the life of Jesus in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 9. The Bible says, let the mind that was in him be in us. He was equal with God, but he did not count it robbery to be equal. He made himself of no reputation. He humbled himself, went to the cross. And God highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every other name. And at the mention of that name, every knee bows. Humility and dedication. It's, a, it's the right covenant key to promotion and lifting. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Grace to humble yourself so that God will exalt you this year. Receive it now. I say receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Pride is simply an overestimation of self. Just, you know, be, be little in your eyes. That's all that humility is. Don't promote yourself. Allow God to promote you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says God resisted the proud and he gives grace to the humble. He will not resist you this year. John chapter 12 from verse 24 to 26 also makes it clear. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 11. God said, in Isaiah 60 verse 11, Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. How will your gates be open? Continually. Thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. Let your amen turn, be a turn around one. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces, that is the riches of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought unto thee. Lift your right hand and I say, Lord, do it in my life now. From today, every door of opportunity, every door of favor, every door of blessing, every door of lifting, every door of employment, every door of business breakthrough, career breakthrough, every door of marital blessing and fruitfulness, every door of admission, every door of scholarship, every door of travel visa, every door of miracle children, miracle marriages, meant for you, they are declared permanently open. In the name of Jesus, from this service, you will enter and stay in your wealthy place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's look at, as we close, covenant demands for open doors. God's presence is the master key to a world of open doors. God's presence. In Psalm 114, from verse 1 to 8, the children of Israel carried God's presence via praise. And they were unstoppable. The mountains gave way. The sea gave way. Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10. Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 10. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Verse 10. The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. God's presence. God's presence is the master key to a world of open doors. When God is for you, no man can be against you. That Romans 8 and verse 31. That's why Moses cried passionately for God's presence before carrying the children of Israel out of Egypt, Exodus, Exodus 33, uh, from verse 12 to 16, as he was leading them, he cried for God's presence. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, 
that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with you. What will go with him? My presence. He said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For where is, uh, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people of the earth. How many people? All the people of the earth that are upon the face of the earth. Divine presence is what makes the difference in the journey of life. Divine presence is what makes the difference between us and the rest of the world. Praise the Lord. Don't toy with divine presence. God's servant said in the first service, you must fight anything that wants to take God's presence from you. Fight it. It may be sin, offense and unforgiveness, laziness, whatever it is that want to take God's presence from you, you must fight it with passion. And he said, any man may leave you in life, but never let God leave you. As it were, everybody left Joseph. All his brethren forsook him. The only qualification he had entering into Egypt was and God was with Joseph. And God was with Joseph. That was his only qualification. When they were taking him into Egypt, he, was, he went as a slave. They took everything from him, including his coat of many colors. They took everything away. He only went with pants. And it's not, the pants those days not as fanciful as the ones we use today. So he may be wearing pants and the buttocks are still outside. That was the only thing, as a slave, he, he took along materially to Egypt. But God was with him. God was with him. And at the end of the day, from the prison, he landed in the palace. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever the enemy is doing around your life to try to take away God's presence from you, is cursed in the name of Jesus. And so what must I do to continue to enjoy open doors in the journey of life? Number one, be born again and remain so. Be born again and remain so. John chapter 3 verse 8, he says, the wind blows where it listed. You don't know where it's coming from, nor where it is going. He said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Just like the wind cannot be stopped, when you are born of the Spirit, you can't be stopped. You can't be stopped. Be properly born again. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things. How many things? All things have become new. Be properly born again. Don't just profess being born again. Your life must show that there is, that, that you know, your old sinful nature has gone. Not that you say, when I was an unbeliever, I had seven girlfriends. But now that I'm born again, I've reduced them to two. Nothing has changed. It's not in the quantity, it's in the act. Praise God. Oh, when I was in the world, I, I, I can drink one carton of beer at a sitting. But now, I, I, now we are born again. And so, two bottles per day that will not disorganize me should be okay. After all, Paul said to Timothy, take a little wine because of that your stomach pain. Now, before you can use that scripture to be drinking, the first thing to do is, oh God, give me the kind of stomach pain that Timothy has. <laughs> then you will be justified in drinking. <laughs> Praise God. And if you don't want to pray that prayer, then you better receive grace to do away with that dirty drinking habit. 1 John 5 verse 4, if the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. When you are born again, you are born an overcomer. I say you are born an what? Overcomer. We are born to win. We are born to overcome, not to be overcome. If you are properly born again, no force of hell can resist your progress in life. Number two, continue to walk in the fear of God. Genesis 39, you know the story of Joseph very well. 
Genesis 39, from verse 2 to 5, and verse 21, the fear of God took him to his place in destiny. In Genesis 42, verse 18, he said, but I fear God. Psalm 112, from verse 1 to 3, he said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the opera shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. That shall be your testimony. That shall be your testimony. That shall be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Number three, remain in love with God. John 14, verse 21. He said, when you have his word and you keep his word, that is the proof that you love him, and then he will manifest himself to you. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things, how many things? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And number four, be committed to following God's leading. Be committed to following God's leading. Psalm 23, from verses 1 to 6, when God leads you, goodness and mercy will follow you. He leads you beside still waters, and you are unstoppable. Praise God. Isaiah 48, verse 21, he led them through the wilderness, they didn't suffer task. Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Psalm 119, verses 18 and 19, David said, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In verse 19, he said, I am a stranger in the earth, so don't keep your commandments from me. I don't want to have strange experiences. Let your word lead me through life. For you not to have strange experiences in life, in a strange land, you need a valid guide. He said, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not that commandment for me. If you don't want to have strange experiences in this strange earth, let the word of God lead you. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You won't go the way that seems right. I say you will not go the way that seems right. You will go the right way. From now on, in the name of Jesus. Finally, number five, enter into a covenant to keep serving God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle. Second Chronicles chapter 15, from verse 12 to 15 and verse 19. The children of Israel entered into a covenant to serve God and they became unstoppable. They enjoyed all round rest. Matthew 6, 33, seek first his kingdom and righteousness and every good thing you desire will be added to you. The Lord give you understanding. In the name of I'm Jesus. I'm sure something has happened to somebody. That door must open unto you. In the name of Jesus. When God opens the door, no devil can shut. Any door any man opens, another man can shut it. So that's why don't concentrate your entire life on men. Concentrate on God. God will cause men to favor you. And when God causes men to favor you, no devil can reverse it. Who is he that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not spoken? Whatever the Lord doeth, it shall be for what? Forever. Hallelujah. This coming month, strange doors will open unto you. God is making somebody an attraction this coming month. All those who have mocked you, are, they are coming to tell you congratulations this coming month. If you believe it, shout a louder, Amen. God can open just one door for a man that can make him recover what he has lost for 10 years or 15 years. I will restore unto you the, all the years that the locust worm, the caterpillar, and the parma worm has eaten. You see, my people shall eat in plenty. They shall, be, they shall not be ashamed. I will restore unto you all the years. All the years. I will restore unto you all the years. God can lead you to a point where a door will open that will make you forget all the toilings of the past years in the name of Jesus. Just one door to open. You don't need plenty. One door. One door. One door. As a businessman, God can give you just one business to hit. <laughs> that in the next 20 years, no struggle. Open door. That's what we are talking about. Any door God opens, the world must know that this is God. This is God. This is God. Because it brings about a sharp turnaround. When God opened the door for Joseph in the palace, just in one day, everything about him changed. 
just one day, everything, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed. His bed changed. Praise the name of the Lord. His food changed. He was eating prisoner's meal before. Now see assorted on the table with all manners of protein. Goat meat is there. Cow meat is there. Chicken is there. Eh? Grass cutter is there. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything there. His meal changed. His dressing changed. He was dressing as a, as a prisoner before. Now he was dressing in royal robe. They took his coat of many colors, not knowing that a better robe was waiting for him in the palace. That is what an open door can do. When God opens the door, he slaps all your mockers and says, shut up! The mouth they are using to mock you before and everything, but God will slap it with one, one, one miracle he gives you and they will shut their mouth. The kind of blessing and open doors that will shut the mouth of all your mockers. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That's the kind of open door God is giving you that will make you an attraction. Oh, you have struggled too long. This coming month, your destiny will open up. When the Lord shall turn again the captivity of them that are Zion, we are like them that dream. We are like them that... Do you know that this coming month, some of you will get jobs that you didn't apply for. Only three people are receiving that miracle. Businessmen and women, you will get contracts that you didn't quote for. Somebody somewhere will just sit down there and say, that person, that person, ah, I've heard about that person. He didn't apply. That's the person you should give the job. That person, that person. That pe if you don't give that person that job, you will lose your own job. <laughs> That's how God will favor you this coming month. Doors will open on their own accord, on their own accord, on their own accord, on their own accord. That shall be your own miracle this coming month in the name of Jesus. The kind of doors that you won't touch, it will open. I was telling them in first service, a man that came from the village, they took him to the city and now took him to a supermarket that has automatic doors. As he entered inside and they was moving towards the door, got to a particular radius, the door opened. Ah, since he has never seen such things before, all the doors he has seen, he opened it and used his strength to pull it open. But just within a radius, the door just opened. He went back. It was too, 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 <laughs> it was too quick to, to look real. He, he went back. He moved forward again. The door opened. He said, ah, eh. all these village people from Arochuku, they have followed me here. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how throughout this coming month, no struggle for you in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you turn to, the door will open for you. Jump on your feet and give him praise and thank him. Lift up your voice, begin to prophesy yourself. What door do you want to open for you? Lift up your voice right now. Begin to speak forth. Begin to speak forth. Begin to speak forth. Nakrotosi karada rado shikata katondo bredisha. Financial doors, marital doors, business doors, job, law, career doors, educational doors. Let it open unto me. Nekorondo susa lata rakato susa leya tarado susa. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I prophesy to you all through this coming month. Doors that you desire will open on their own accord to you. Your struggles are over in the name of Jesus. Whatever good thing that you have struggled and struggled and struggled for in the last one year, I command double portion will pursue you in the name of Jesus. I decree from now, people will be begging to favor you. People will be begging to honor you. People will be begging to bless you. In the name of Jesus. That business door is open right now. That career door is open right now. That academic door is open right now. That financial door is open unto you right now. Whatever door that has been hanging, I decree be open unto you now in the name of Jesus. I decree beginning from today. 
your life will become a wonder. Your days of struggle is over. Your sorrows are over. Your stagnation is over. Near success syndrome in your life is over. Enter into your testimony now. In the name of Jesus. Where you need one person, ten people will show up to help you. In the name of Jesus. I therefore prophesy to you now. Receive your open doors now. Go and enjoy your open doors now. In the name of Jesus. This week is blessed for you. The God of our fathers goes with you. You will not be stranded all through this week. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you turn to, people will be waiting to help you. Doors will open on their own accord. Go in peace. Return with your series of testimonies. In Jesus mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Let everybody say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Tell your neighbor the doors are already open unto you.